What's up my comic comrades? Today we're covering yet another Future State book, Future State Teen Titans issues 1 and 2. I will say, this series is a little confusing. Lots of things happen and are said, but we don't know why, what it means, or what they're talking about. Now that is because this book is a precursor to the Teen Titans Academy title that we'll be getting in March when DC Infinite Frontier starts. Literally the same writer Tim Sheridan from this book will be writing Teen Titans Academy, so my bet is what they're setting up in this book is going to be resolved in the Titans Academy series. With that said, let's jump in and see what this book is all about. Issue 1 starts off with us looking at Titan's Island in New York, New York, where Titan's tower has been completely destroyed. We then see an older Nightwing wearing his Nightfall costume accompanied by Amiko Queen, aka Oliver Queen's half-sister, and she is now the New Era. They then start looking at the graves of Fallen Teen Titan members like Donna Troy, Wally West, and Wallace West. If you watched our video on the Future State Flash comic or read it for yourself, you know what happened to Wallace West and Wally West. However, if you didn't do either of those, the link for that Flash video is right here. As Amiko takes some time to mourn, Nightwing goes to look for something, and after he finds a briefcase, which we could only assume is what he was looking for, he sees the red X mask just lying there on the floor. Seeing his old mask then gives him a flashback to his birthday party some time ago, where some mystery person gifted him his old red X mask, which makes him say, I never thought I'd see this again. Where did you find it? And Starfire says, I didn't get you a present. Sorry. He then asks, who gave this to me then? She then tells him perhaps one of the students. I think the epic Red X story earned your respect. Dick then says, no, they still think of me as a Robin who outgrew the tights. Starfire then tells him, I do miss those. He then responds, I think we're doing good here, Corey. We finally got it right. She then replies, you know what? Now that you mention it, I do have something for you. Meet me in the flight simulator after lights out and bring the mask. Essentially, she's gonna give Nightwing a present. He's gonna have quite the time unwrapping. But before I go any further, two things. One, this flashback gives us a glimpse at the beginning of Titans Academy. As we know, in the future, former Teen Titan members like Nightwing, Starfire, Beast Boy, and Cyborg decide to open up Titans Academy to become teachers and train the new generation of Teen Titans. Two, for those of you who haven't watched the early 2000s Teen Titans show, some of you may be saying Dick Grayson was Red X once upon a time. Also, who's Red X? It was an alternate persona created by Grayson for the Teen Titans animated series. Dick created the Red X persona as part of a larger deception. The full extent of it is a lot to explain, but who knows, maybe in the future we'll do a history of or origin of Red X episode and get into all of that. Point is, it seems like in the comics, Dick became Red X for similar reasons as he did in the animated series. Although we don't have much to go off, so this is just all assumptions at this point in time. I will say though, this is the first appearance of Red X in comics, so this is a key issue, meaning I would grab it while it's still cheap because you never know, this could become a really hot book. We are then brought back to present time where Dick opens up a briefcase only to reveal it's an H dial, which stands for hero dial. For those of you who are not familiar with it, it's an object that is used to temporarily gain superpowers. With that said, it is extremely dangerous and it is often misused. As the two try to figure out if this H dial still works, Starfire radios in saying, Nightwing, Arrow, change of plans, they're back. Nightwing responds saying, already? Back at the Titan safe house, which is somewhere under Queens, New York, we see that the people Starfire was referring to is Beast Boy and Cyborg, or rather, Cybeast, as they've now merged into one person. How and why did this happen? We don't know yet. All we know is that they merged somehow and they're now going by the name Cybeast. I also want to mention that we see Cybeast make a brief appearance at the end of Future State Flash issue 2. Either way, Cybeast is unconscious, so Starfire asks Johnny Thunder if he could wake them. He responds saying, there's still so much about the former Cyborgs and Beast Boys combined physiology we don't understand, which is a nice way of saying no. I can't wake them. The comic then takes us back to the past again where we see Cyborg, Starfire, and Beast Boy teaching their students at Titans Academy. It's a fun little look at what it was like before the Academy was destroyed. We are then brought back to the present where we see Nightwing is talking to Starfire over the comm saying, we should shoot Cybeast full of adrenaline to revive him. But she basically tells him, Absolutely not. Nightwing and Starfire continue to argue all the way until Arrow and Nightwing make their way back to the Titan safe house. At which point Arrow tells Starfire, yeah, I wouldn't wait for him. Starfire says fine, and then starts addressing the group of new Teen Titans, saying, today's priority is reestablishing communication with Shazam's field team. Bratgirl, you're with Gorilla Greg. Totally tubular, you're with Jakeem and Johnny. Jupacabra, you're on watch. Yes, those are actually the names of these new Teen Titan members. I kid you not, Bratgirl is a real name, as is Totally Tubular. I will say though, I am digging Gorilla Greg being a good version of Gorilla Grog and Chupacabra because that's just kind of cool because again, Chupacabra. Anyway, Starfire continues to tell them, we have to assume Cybeast came back to deliver a message. If that's true, then it's possible there's no one left in the field to link up to. Starfire goes on to tell them about the mission, but even by the end, we don't really know what the heck is going on and why they're trying to reestablish communications with Shazam's field team. Anyway, the team then disperses to get to work, at which point Nightwing comes out of the shadows saying, why didn't you tell them about the H dial, about the plan, and what's with all this Nightwing crap all of a sudden? Starfire responds, because as I keep telling you, the plan is off the table, and because I 
I don't answer to you, Nightwing. We basically see that Starfire and Nightwing aren't on good terms anymore, and at this point in their relationship, there's no way she would give him that birthday present she gave to him years ago at his birthday party. Red X mask? or not. The comic then takes us to Raven where she's essentially fighting Ghidorah from Godzilla, and when she finally defeats the creature with a series of spells, she's taken out of whatever dimension she's in, forced to watch her teammates crush and bunker fade away all endgame style. At which point we see her locked in a safe house sub-basement saying, damn it, I'm out. I don't know what happened. A voice in a cell then tells her, then you weren't paying attention. Seven steps back, your team moved left, but you moved right. It was over before you initiated the tether. She says, I need more training. Let's go. The person in the cell responds saying, no, I've taken you as far as you're willing to go. Come back when you're ready to do more. Otherwise, stay out of my head, revealing that this wasn't a real battle, but rather a training exercise. Raven then tells this mystery person, this is about me being ready. Do you think I shouldn't do it? The person then tells her, you caught me, so to speak. No, I think you should do it, just not without me. I screwed up too. She then tells this person, yeah, that's why you're never getting out of here. Certainly not for this. Anyway, maybe you're right. Maybe we're done here. Look, I appreciate how you helped me prepare. I couldn't have gotten this far this fast without your strategic thinking, but the rest, I have to do alone. The person then tells her, I want to make things right, Miss Raven, at which point Raven realizes that Psybeast is awake. We then find out that Psybeast has retrieved the Spear of Destiny, and apparently it's going to help end the apocalypse. Psybeast then says, though with what we've learned from Barry Allen's recordings on the Four Riders, our friends may be too far gone. Again, watch our video on Future State Flash to know what Psybeast is talking about. Arrow then speaks up saying, the spear is never going to destroy them, referring to the Riders. She goes on to say, those monsters have fed on every life they've taken since we've unleashed them. They're too powerful. Raven then walks in saying, you're right, it won't destroy them. But it wasn't meant to. It was meant to draw the four riders together into one place. Where we will make our last stand. And it worked. They converged on the spear and Billy and his team. It's time. As we see Crush, Bunker, and Shazam hold off the riders with the Spear of Destiny. The comic then takes us to the past where we see one of the Teen Titans Academy students has taken up Dick Grayson's old Red X persona. And he tells several of his teachers and Titans, I won't let you kill one of our students. One of the students replies, kill? Dude, what are you talking about? And what is that cocoon? Red X says, I don't know what it is, but I know who's inside it. And I plotted it out three moves ahead of you, so I know exactly why you all came here. Donna Troy then says, this is ridiculous. Take off that stupid costume if you want to be on this team. Red X then says, I would never join you, not after this. Nightwing then speaks up saying, okay, calm down. I just want to understand why you're wearing my old mask. Red X says, because I know what really happened, Dick, not the story you fed us. I know why you put on this mask all those years ago. Red X stood for something then, and he stands for the same thing now. While distracted, Montez and Donna Troy step in and knock Red X out using the H dial. But the H dial causes an explosion, killing Montez and Donna Troy. It could potentially be the same exact explosion that destroyed Titan's Tower and Academy, but we don't really know yet. We could only assume. We are then brought back to the present once again, where Nightwing goes down to the cell of the mysterious person, saying, it's more yours than mine now anyway. The person in the cell says, is this some kind of a second chance? Nightwing then replies, for me, not for you. I failed you. The mystery man then says, don't flatter yourself. I deserve everything that's coming to me. Nightwing then says, does Rachel? We're not going to let her take this on by herself. You were right about that mask. I wore it to make a point that the Titans are dead. We've tried so many times to reassemble, fix what's broken, start again. But in the end, all we ever do is make a bigger mess of it. And Starfire is about to do it again. The Titans are dead and I'm tired and I'm ready to win one no matter what it takes. And he's saying all this as he puts on a mask. And then on the final page, we see Nightwing wearing Deathstroke's mask and Red X released from the cell, putting on the Red X mask that Dick just gave him. And with that, Red X and now Grayson as Deathwing set out to save the day. Issue 2 then opens up with the Titans confronting Dick Grayson and Red X. Starfire then says, what is this Dick? We're in the middle of the actual end times, about to fight before the Riders of the Apocalypse, who might I add your friend Red X is responsible for unleashing on the world. Dick tells her, we are all responsible. Starfire responds, give me the H dial. Your judgment is compromised. Dick says, you have to trust me, Corey. I know what I'm doing. She says, yeah. Do you know what you're wearing? Deathwing. We are then taken to six months prior where several of the Titans go to mourn the fallen Titans and students. Dick then says, these kids would have been Titans had they gotten the chance. We were supposed to help these kids to save them, but in the end, we just weaponized them, drafted them into our endless war. Story of my life. Starfire then says, our last lecture, Dick, is that why you came back? He tells them, I came back because I found X. Or he found me this morning. He asked me to lock him up at the safe house. And that explains why and how Red X is locked up in the safe house. Back in the present, Dick tells Starfire, can I talk, please? First, it's just a mask for protection. I haven't worked with Slade in months. You know that. Let's pause for a second because this is nuts. Nightwing was apparently working with Deathstroke for a period of time, but we don't know why. Literally, this issue never touches on it again, so we're probably going to find out more about that in the Titans Academy series. Anyway, Deathwing goes on to say, Red X was my call. He wants to help, and maybe he already has, Corey. She then interrupts saying, you know what? Fine. Keep the dial. 
Red X, your death mask, whatever. I'm tired of fighting you, dick. She then tells her remaining Teen Titans, all right, you all know the plan. Totally tubular, Bratgirl, Chupacabra, and Gorilla Greg will all stay behind under Jaquim and Johnny Thunder's leadership. If you don't hear from us in 24 hours, that means we're all dead, and you six are the world's last hope. We are then taken back to some moment in the past on Halloween where the Teen Titans students are using the H dial almost as a Ouija board of sorts, trying to connect to their fallen classmates to get some answers of what happened. Then on the next page, we see some sort of energy starting to appear with the students saying, is that, oh my God, it's working. And then one says, you have to give it back right now. Back in the present, Raven tells Red X, you got what you wanted, you made the team, happy? He responds, don't I look happy? Starfire then says, it's time to go, Raven, at which point Raven opens up a portal. Then on the next page, we see Raven, Nightwing, Starfire, Red X, Bunker, Side Beast, Arrow, and Crush join Shazam to face the four riders, which are war, pestilence, death, and of course, Famine. And again, as we know from the Future State Flash series, Famine has killed and possessed the original Wally West's body. We even get a flashback in this issue of the day Famine possessed Wally, with Nightwing saying to him, come on, they got Roundhouse, we can't let them get... Wally, but it's too late. Wally had been taken over and attacks Nightwing, but is saved by Raven. Back in the present, it looks like Famine wants a rematch with Nightwing and Raven, with Wally even breaking out for a second saying, it's me, Rachel, it's Wally, I need your help. But that doesn't last long as Famine takes over his body again and starts snarling at Raven. But Shazam comes in with the speed of Mercury, punching Wally, sending him flying saying, I got this. Shazam then tells the Titans, we have to be fast with that one. One more second, he would have starved you all. Arrow then asks, where's the Spear of Destiny, Billy? He says, destroyed, as expected. Do you not know the plan? Arrow responds, why does everyone keep not telling me about the plan? Shazam tells her the Spear was just a lure. Now that we've got all four of them together, Miss Raven's gonna tether herself to them. Then lock them in the only prison we think will hold them, the Rock of Eternity. We then find out that once locked away in the Rock of Eternity, Shazam and Billy will stand guard forever, and Shazam will never be able to turn back into Billy because when he's Billy, his power resides in the Rock of Eternity, and they can't risk the riders getting control of it, so he's not changing back. Which if you read issue one of Future State Shazam makes all the sense in the world because in that issue we see Billy essentially guarding hell making sure the riders don't escape but we didn't know why until now. With everyone knowing the plan the Titans band together charging the four riders but Famine who is possessing Wally's corpse is able to grab Arrow by the neck sucking all the life force out of her killing her. At which point Starfire says we have to fall back but Nightwing says no we have to give Raven more time so that's exactly what they continue to do fighting the four riders pressing on. After they continue to fight Red X really realizes they're not getting anywhere and he needs to help Raven who is trying to end this while the rest of the Titans hold off the riders. So he calls for Grayson saying, now. Dick then hands him the H dial saying, Titans, right? Red X takes off his mask, giving it to Dick saying, Titans. Red X then takes off running towards Raven yelling at the riders saying, hey, look, it's me. You know who I am, don't you? Yeah, I thought so. With the H dial in hand. Starfire then asks Dick what X is doing. He tells her, making amends. X understands the part he played in bringing on the apocalypse. And this is the part he has to play to end it. Starfire then says, by using the H dial, Dick tells her, it's not just an H dial, not anymore. But Starfire doesn't understand what he's saying, so Dick goes on to tell her, he told me the kids somehow modified this thing on Halloween. Which was that brief flashback we saw earlier in the issue. We learned that night the kids modified it so they could dial up the Calvary. And on the next page, we see that means bringing back the ghost of every Fallen Teen Titans member ever to help fight the four riders. And with that, the spirits of these fallen titans start attacking and wrecking shop on the riders, allowing Raven a big enough distraction to cast her spell, trapping the riders. But during all of this, X takes a hit to the torso. On the next page, we see Raven is so exhausted she can't even fly anymore, but Shazam flies in to catch her before she could hit the ground. And just when you think it's over, the riders start attacking again, possessing Crush, Nightwing, Starfire, and Psybeast. At which point, Raven tells Shazam, it's the riders, Billy, I have them, they're part of me now, but it's all unkindness. You have to hurry. Shazam then says, guide me, Zeus, creating a magic portal to bring Raven and the Riders to the Rock of Eternity, saying, don't worry, Miss Raven. Nothing can escape the Rock of Eternity as long as I'm standing guard. And with that, the comic ends. But not before it tells us, if we want to know how all this came to be, we'll have to find out in the pages of Teen Titans Academy coming in March. Well, there you have it, friends. The end of an amazing two-issue series, if I do say so myself. By the end of this miniseries, we did get some answers like what Shazam's role is in this, and it explains what's going on in his Future State book. We're also given a roundabout explanation of Red X's role, and or at least the clarification he's responsible for the riders attacking. And we learned how Wally West became possessed by Famine, but there's still a lot of questions like how did this all start? How did Beast Boy and Cyborg merge into Cybeast? At what point in the DC timeline did Dick Grayson become Red X? And where are those stories? Why was Nightwing working with Deathstroke? As well as several more. But lastly, the biggest question, at least for me, is who the heck is this new Red X? And is he dead? We did see him get hurt taking a hit to the chest, bleeding, but 
That doesn't mean he's dead. Anyway, I would assume this new Red X is probably a member of the Bat family like Damian Wayne or Tim Drake, but he could be a completely brand new character. I don't know. All I know is this miniseries has me very intrigued for the Teen Titans Academy series coming in March. What I'm saying is, this title definitely did its job, which was to get me invested in wanting to read the new Titans Academy book. I love what they set up and now I need the answers, but like I say at the end of every episode, that's just my two cents. You guys love these characters just as much as I do, so we want to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments. And that's going to bring another episode of Variant to a close, but if you enjoyed today's episode of Variant, be sure to check out this one right here, and if you like all of our videos, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It always helps us out, but I will see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics.